Hello and welcome to Around the Bases. Today is Friday, August 23rd. He is John Heyman. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing well. We're going to start off with the Yankees. Uh, taking two out of three against the Cleveland Guardians. Now have a one and a half game lead in the AL East. You know, that was an impressive series for them. But the two things that we got to talk about with the Yankees, Aaron Judge. I mean, the season he is having, there's no more words for it, John. <laughs> it, people try to put it in perspective, but I think we really can't. It's one of the most historic seasons offensively. It's better than his 2022 year. He's on pace for 61 home runs. But honestly, John, for you, when you're watching someone like Aaron Judge and the superstar season he's having, what more can you say about it? Yeah, you know, like you said, uh, we've had enough words. I don't know what else to say. I Probably the greatest season I've ever seen. I don't care. Count Barry Bond, so take him out of the equation. And OPS Plus is the best we've ever seen, so it kind of validates what we're watching. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, you know, that 2022 season was incredible. This one's even better. Probably helps to have Soto in that lineup with him. You know, hopefully from their perspective, they're able to keep him. But uh, even without him, he was pretty darn good in 2022. Uh, it's uh, it's amazing. He's the best position player in baseball. And uh, at this point, it's really not that close. No, it's not. And, and for John, for you, I know you mentioned Juan Soto. I mean, he's having an incredible year, too, and it feels like he's maybe being overshadowed just because of Aaron Judge's season. Like, are we not appreciating yeah. what Juan Soto is doing enough here, too, for well, the Yankees? Well, you and I appreciate it. I, I think the people who are paying attention appreciate it. It's also incredible. Uh, it's a great season, and another year could be an MVP season, and I think he appreciates the fact that he's got Judge behind him. That certainly helps his situation. I'm sure there's still one, two and walks. I haven't looked, but you know, I mean, they're the two best hitters in the league, two best hitters in baseball. And I don't think there's any debating that. And maybe the greatest one, two punch. Well, certainly in the last uh, 90 years, yeah. I would say, I mean, yeah. is, is Ruth and Garrick equal or better. Maybe, I don't know. I didn't see them. I was a little before my time, even that was. So uh, it's amazing. And I think it's the best one, two punch probably ever. There've been some great ones, certainly Aaron and Matthews, Mason McCovey, Marison Mantle is pretty good for the Yankees. But uh, right now it feels like this is the best one. Uh, certainly that any of us can ever remember. If anybody remembers Babe Ruth, what are you, you're probably 120 years old. So finally, John, why do teams still keep pitching him? I still don't understand why, <laughs> what the guardians were thinking right. during that series, man. I mean, they, right. they took advantage well, the of guy every behind opportunity. Him, yeah. The guy behind him is doing okay too now. Right. I mean, you know, the lineup is a lot longer than it's been. Right. They went and they're getting stretch. Josh Chisholm back a guy that, right. you know, you had said and reported last week that, that this shouldn't be a long stay for him. He right. ends up doing the minimum stay on the IL. So that lineup seems to be getting longer here. Yeah, for a while it was a two-man lineup, as Luis Severino said. It felt that way anyway for that month period where they just weren't hitting. Uh, now they're back to being the best lineup in baseball. Uh, certainly Stanton helps big time. Uh, certainly Jazz Chisholm helps big time, uh, moving Wells up. And now mm -hmm. he's really the starting catcher at this point, and I get it. I mean, you know, if he's the cleanup hitter or the number five hitter, you know, he's really not in a platoon anymore. Yeah. I understand that. And, you know, they still have a couple of weaknesses in that lineup. You know, uh, LeMay, who's still not doing that great. You know, they got a couple guys not doing great. But uh, when you've got the two best hitters in baseball and you've got other really good hitters around them, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. The Yankees fans are going to be excited tonight. The Rockies, you're getting Jazz Chisholm back. Anthony Rizzo starting a rehab assignment. Jason Dominguez seems to be raking back in AAA. Be interested to see when he comes back uh, to the Major League roster because Verdugo has been struggling, to your point. Let's move over to the team in Queens, but they are not in Queens. They are out on the West Coast, and they start a monster, monster road trip. They took the game last night against the Padres in a four-game yeah. set. John, how vitally important. They play the Padres, then the Diamondbacks, and then they finish yeah. up with the, the White Sox. So how yeah. important is this road trip for this Mets team if they want to make the playoffs? Yeah, I, I'm of the belief that when they play the Braves, that's going to be the games that really, really matter. You know, all the other games are is similar. They need they need to win a lot of games at this point, right? They're a game and a half behind the Braves. They need to beat the Braves. And, you know, I, the Giants may be outside. I don't know. I think the Reds and the Cardinals and the Cubs, they're not going to make it. So they're basically in a two-team race with the Braves, and that's the team they need to beat. Yeah, I think the Diamondbacks and the Padres are going to get in. I give the Mets credit. They won two out of three against the Orioles. They won the first game at San Diego. So they're playing a lot better against the so called good teams obviously the Orioles have some injuries now but still good team uh they went six and six against uh the dregs of the league 
Uh, it gave me a little bit of pause. I was yeah. concerned about my playoff prediction. I'm still <laughs> a little concerned. I give the Braves credit with all the injuries to be still a game and a half in front, but the Mets certainly have a decent shot at it, and they got to continue to play well against the good teams, and they've got a number of those games coming up, certainly with the Padres, then the Diamondbacks, then they get a so-called breather against the White Sox, better win those games, and then come on home and uh, hopefully continue to play well. Well, look, John, you talked to Luis Severino. He pitched, pitched a great game last night, kept uh, kept him in the game yeah. after five innings pitch for one run ball. He had a complete game shutout last weekend. I was there. That was awesome to see. I mean, he's he's kind of important for them here. They got Blackburn going tonight. Peterson's been pitching really well for them. That's what ultimately it's going to come down to is if their pitching can keep performing. For right. them. I feel like that lineup is going to produce no matter what for them. I mean, I know they have their ebbs and flows, but they have a pretty solid lineup in the National League. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying it forever. Their lineup is really deep, right? Yeah. I mean, you got Bader batting ninth or whoever's batting eighth, whether it's McNeil or, you know, uh, Alvarez. Uh, these are pretty good players who are batting seven, eight, and nine for the team. And obviously, you've got Lindor, who's an MVP candidate right at the top. Alonzo's doing better. J.D. Martinez, obviously a professional hitter. Vientos has been great. The offense is not going to be the issue. They've had a few bad games. I get it, but uh, the offense is not going to be the issue. The fact that Peterson is pitching well, along yeah. with Benaya and Severino, gives them a very nice three right now. So that's huge. If Quintana can get his game back together, that would be a big, big plus. And I'm glad Severino did well in the game after he was on our podcast on the New York Post with Joel Sherman. People were starting to say we were a jinx. I think we had Ben Charrington on, and the Pirates <laughs> lost the next 10 games or something like that. That was earlier in the season, but uh, maybe it was last year. It got year, close, John, last night. Up. He had a bases loaded jam in the fifth inning. It got okay, close. all right. It's the Pirates, so I'm not blaming our podcast. You know, anything can happen with the Pirates, but and they were way over 500 when he interviewed me. I think it was actually last year, and I was starting to think, are we a jinx? I don't know. But we're not. Severino did great. He was great in the podcast. And he and Manaya and Peterson are doing fine. The bullpen is pieced together better than I ever thought it would be between, you know, Budo. They'll have Nunez in there eventually uh, doing well. I'm sure Diaz is back to pitching close to two years ago. Maybe not quite that level, but mm -hmm. pretty darn good. And uh, they're in, you know, decent position. Not not great position. I know they can't relax, but pretty good position. Yeah, no, I agree, John. I mean, it's it's. I'm I, I'm I'm excited for these games this weekend. They're huge for the Mets, and I think this could be. And to your point, the Diamondbacks and Padres should be should be making the playoffs. These is yeah. this is who you're going up against for that wild card spot, including the Braves. Those games matter the most. Uh, John, let's go to our next topic here: award season. We are a month away from this season being complete here, mm -hmm. and it seems like the MVP candidates are being run away with Judge and Otani. Yeah. But I mean, they're. A lot of talk and chatter about Lindor, <laughs> but I mean, Otani's on pace for yeah. almost 50 50 season year. Right. So, what right. more can you say about the awards? And not, let's not forget Bobby Witt. I mean, he's right. having an incredible Amazing. year for the for the Royals, too. Yeah. First, the National League. Yeah. Otani's the leader. I, I don't think it's done yet. I, I'm going to say it's 90% probably, but I think Lindor's still in there. I, I'm not sure that Marte, now he's got some injury issues potentially. Uh, Ozuna, you know, another DH going to win, different DH other than Otani going to win. I, I kind of doubt that. So, I mean, I think Lindor is probably the biggest threat. And, and I get it. Otani's on pace for close to 50 50, as you said. If he does do 50 50 in the same season, it'll be the first time ever. But if he does 48 48, it's still pretty darn good, even as a DH. No DH, full time DH has ever won. Don Baylor, 65 games at DH in 1979 for the Angels. One was not a full-time DH, obviously, in 65 games, fewer than half the games. But, I mean, Otani at this point, I, I got to say that he's got a pretty significant lead, although Lindor is ahead on the F4. I don't, couldn't tell you the difference between B-War and F4, but <laughs> one of them, Otani's got a, a decent lead over Marte and Lindor and Ozuna. But in the other one, Lindor's got, you know, a neck in front, as they say in the horse racing uh, so I'm not going to count Lindor out of it. He's been great on the leadership aspect. He's been great at shortstop. Uh, his outs above average, top 10 in baseball, all positions. And nobody else on the Mets is even anywhere near. I think he was eighth last time I checked. The next best was like 84th. So, I mean, their defense has come up. It was yes. well below average. Now it's just slightly below average overall. But he has been excellent. So he's got a shot. In the American League, I, you know, I'm not going to say it's over yet, but I mean, you know, can somebody really take this away from Judge? It'd be tough. 
Uh, he's having an all-time great season offensively. He stepped in and played center field well. Uh, but, you know, obviously Bobby Witt in another year, incredible shortstop, great hitter, uh, you know, batting average, home run, speed. Yeah. He's got the full package, and it, he's part of a great story. The Royals won 56 games last year. They're on pace to win around 90 this year. That's a pretty good story to tell. So, you know, I, I'm not going to count it over yet. That one's, I think, closer over than the Otani one. But uh, I'm going to say that Witt's still in it. It's amazing to me that Soto's having the year he's having. And even for that matter, Duran and uh, Henderson are having the years they're having. And they're really not really in the contest. You can call them an MVP candidate if you like, but not for the top spot. The top two guys are going to be Judge and Witt. And right now... I would say 90% it's going to be judge and deservedly so an incredible offensive season, as we mentioned. No doubt, John. I mean, th- I've seen every stat imaginable out there. They keep coming up with more and more terminology and stats. I've seen average plus uh, Bobby Witt is on a pace to have the same season Ted Williams had average mm-hmm. plus in, in like the 1930s or 40s or whatever. I mean, it was it's insane. Yeah, this season. And Ted Williams didn't play shortstop either and do it spectacularly. Right. He was right, the, exactly. probably the greatest hitter of all time. But he wasn't a great shortstop or even any shortstop. So, I mean, Bobby Witt, let's not forget, it, it is an amazing season in, not, in probably eight years out of ten. He's an MVP. But this year, he's probably going to have to settle for a second in the And MVP. just a quick one-off here, John. I mean, you could argue, you could argue, this is the two greatest right-handed hitting seasons we've seen. One for average and the other one for slug and power. I mean, it's yeah. it's two of the greatest offensive yeah. seasons for right-handed hitters in, in one year we've, we're, put, we're seeing right now between Judge and Witt. Yeah, I mean, and with overall, uh, I mean, he's probably the best defensive player in baseball, any position, right? I, I don't know whether they, sometimes they give that platinum glove out uh, haphazardly. Well, don't tell Aaron Boone that because according to I him, see. he says Anthony Volpe's the best defensive shortstop well, in all baseball. Well, you know, he's a very positive man. I'm not quite as positive as him, uh, but good for him. I'm, it's glad, worked, you, it's I'm worked, glad you're being honest. It's John. worked out for Boone. I, I get it. But Bobby Wood's the best shortstop defensively no in doubt. baseball, and he's the best hitter among the shortstops, and he's amazing. And unfortunately, he's not going to win the MVP. He can have the platinum glove. He can have a gold glove, obviously. He can have a lot of other things, but this point, it's pretty far a long shot to be uh, MVP over Aaron Judge. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. No doubt. And, John, let's bring this all home. Uh, your most disappointing team of the week. Who is it? <laughs> I got I feel bad I got to go with the Orioles. They're disappointing me personally because I had them as the uh, World Series participant at the beginning of the year against the Dodgers. Now, the Dodgers are doing well. They have the best record in baseball. But right now, and it's really, I mean, the bullpen has fallen apart with the Orioles, but the problem is that starting pitching, three out of their top four starters now out. Bradish has been out for the year. Grayson Rodriguez out. They're hoping he'll be back by late September. That sounds pretty iffy to me, but hopefully for um, for their sake that he is. And obviously now they, they uh, picked up Eflin, and he is now out with a shoulder concern. Three out of four top starters, that's tough. Whether you're a small market, mid-market, large market, it's tough to overcome. And, uh, you know, I feel bad saying it, but the Orioles are my disappointing team of the week. But it's more that they're unfortunate than disappointing. Certainly some unfortunate injuries for them. Uh, You know, the Yankees, like I said, are a game and a half now up in the AL East, and the Orioles just couldn't take that spot no matter how many times the Yankees were struggling the past month. But it's still a race to the the finish line here. We still got plenty of games left. John, we thank you as always for going around the base with us, man, and giving us the latest on all the news, man. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you.